everyone, it's Biap from the Closet Historian here, and today I've got some fabrics from moodfabrics.com to show you all. So, mood. I really do like that they put things in their shopping bag, even though they're mailing them to you, uh, because it really gives you that whole project runway experience, and I feel like that's the only reason that they do it. But, uh, you know, why not? It's fun. Loud bag, though. Let's start with the most... Uh, the thing that I've actually been wanting to get. I've want, been wanting to make a white eyelet dress to wear with like sharp black accessories. I think it just looks so cool and fresh for spring and summer. So I finally um, got some white eyelet fabric. So here is the white eyelet that I got. You can kind of see it's got sort of a floral print but on a larger scale and not such like small tiny daisy flowers but like a larger print. And so here is that eyelet. So I'm hoping to make sort of, sort of a simple A-line uh, kind of dress out of this, something really 40s. I'm not sure if I want to do a um, separate set-in sleeve, like a puff sleeve, or if I just want to do my typical kimono sleeve that I do on like freaking every dress I make. White eyelid, I finally got some to finally make a nice crisp white dress for summertime, which I've always avoided white because I feel like if black makes you look thin, what does white do? But uh, I'm getting over that little hang up and gonna make a white dress. The next fabric I got was described as being from the collection of Marc Jacobs, so how fancy is that? But mostly I just liked it because it was um, described as rayon and it was kind of a cool tropical print that I could see myself accessorizing with color because it's monochrome. But it's a really strange hand, this fabric, because I, I, I did do a um, burn test since I've got it because it just does not even feel like rayon. It really feels like some sort of a polyester or a acetate of some kind. It's really got this super crisp, cool, poly taffeta sort of feeling. But it looks like this. It's really pretty tropical sort of flower print and tropical leaves. And I love, I love a tropical for summer. So I'm probably gonna make this into some sort of a evening or like a cocktail kind of dress, something that can transition from daytime into evening time. Not that I go out very often, but you never know. The, the occasion could strike that I actually want to leave the house and then you might need a pina colada ready dress. It was um, only $13.99 a yard, which I thought was a really good deal for a designer fabric that was such a cute print. So I think I got two and a half yards. Um, hopefully I'm gonna make a dress out of this guy. I've got three different cotton sateens. I'm a big fan of cotton sateen fabric. I really like working with cotton in general, but it's so hard to find, at least at Joann's, an apparel weight cotton. Most of them are quilting cottons. And quilting cottons come in such gorgeous colors and prints, but I just find that they don't wash super well when you make clothing out of them. They are a bit thicker too, which is not always the best for every um, style or design, but that's not really my biggest hang up with them. It's more that they wash uh, into this sort of worn, faded kind of look. And I'm just not really happy with that when it comes to clothing. I don't know if that um, does better if you dry clean it, but I try and avoid making things that I have to dry clean, she says after she just talked about rayon, but you know, I don't want too many things that I have to take to the dry cleaners, just gets expensive. So cotton sateen for me is a really great cotton fabric to work with so I can still throw it in the wash. Um, remember to pre-wash your cotton fabrics or most fabric before you use it, that way you can throw it in the washer later after you've made your project. So me and cotton sateen, we have a great thing going on. And I've got three more of them to show you. So the first is a bright lemon, or not lemon, a bright lemon, a bright lime colored cotton sateen. And it's in a nice sort of lighter weight, not too um, stretchy. Sometimes it's hard to find cotton sateen without stretch. I do prefer without stretch, but I mean, it, it does make a comfy dress in the end if you make something out of something with a little bit of stretch in it. It's really bright color for me, but I think it'll be fun. It's something a little bit different for me. I bought a lot of these hoping they were gonna be wide enough to put my circle skirt pattern on. And I don't know why I always think that that will fit on two and a half yards. But it doesn't. I still need three. So most of these fabrics I got two and a half yards hoping to be able to do circle skirts, but looks like we'll be ending up with half circle or A lines for most of them, which is just fine. So this one, I was inspired by a dress that I saw in a British pathé, path, path, pathy, path, path, I don't really know how to say the name of their videos, but pathé, Brit British pathé. So there's a video on their channel um, showing some 40s fashions in Paris and there's a girl wearing a chartreuse dress that's just super chic and so I'm kind of basing this one off of that. It's a higher collar and sort of a three-quarter length sleeve and so I'm hoping to make something similar to that with this fabric. Ran out of space on that memory card so I uh, recentered a little bit 
when we start on this one. So that's not bad, right? Adjust the frame a little bit. You gotta take opportunities as they come. It's not a bad thing if the memory card runs out of space while you're trying to record. It's fine. It's just fine. So this next fabric, another cotton sateen, like I said, is actually um, a print instead of a solid, and it's a stripe. It's about five eighths of an inch thick, the stripe, and it's a black and a dark ivory sort of uh, ecru, I think they called it, um, but a darker vanilla-y ivory sort of shade and then black and a stripe. And I think a stripe like this is really fun to work with because you can set parts, um, like if you want to do a pocket or just do the sleeves or some uh, accent detail on the bias. So you can have the stripes going in sort of a chevron effect. So that's really fun to work with different style lines with a stripe like this one. And I mean, who doesn't love a black and white stripe? It sort of reminds me of that 18th century dress in Sleepy Hollow with the stripes. That dress is just really gorgeous. And so to have a striped dress will be nice and fun. It'll be great to wear this summer and accessorize with um, bright colors like red or turquoise, yellow, anything will really go with black and white. And also I think it'll be really fun for next Halloween because who doesn't love stripes around Halloween? I'm hoping to make a sort of simple 40s dress probably with another like just a kimono all in one sleeve and an A-line skirt, something more simple. I've been making a lot of embroidered and kind of over the top things lately uh, leading up to my trip to France to wear there. And so to have some sort of simple cotton projects will be really nice, a nice break and a uh, nice return to sewing after my trip. So I've been looking at this fabric for a while on Mood and it is definitely a lighter weight sateen, but it is this brightly colored floral fabric and it's a little bit Granny's Curtains in the best way. And I like how it's got this sort of grungy khaki colored background because as you guys probably know if you follow my blog at all, I love safari fashion. And to me, this is kind of like the perfect mix of your safari khakis, um, sort of more like surplus colored uh, fabric and with the bright floral on top sort of combines my love of sort of, a, I keep saying sort of, it combines my love of khaki adventurous style and 1950s floral feminine style and so I think this will be a great dress to have for me. You can style it either like more clean and feminine or you can style it more like rugged and safari-ish which I think would be really cool. This one actually I think is wide enough um, to put my circle skirt pattern on so I probably will eke out a full circle skirt for the dress on this one which is really nice and then the usually the leftover corners after you cut out, if you cut out a circle skirt the leftover corner spaces usually is enough to eke out the bodice and a facing, so I'll probably end up doing that, but we'll see in the end what ends up fitting on this guy. That's the problem with buying fabric online. You can kind of estimate, or if you're really industrious, you can actually measure <laughs> um, how big your patterns are and whether or not they will fit and how much fabric you actually need to buy. I'm just not that uh, precise of a person, so sometimes I just get two and a half yards and hope for the best, which is obviously not the best method, but it is my method. And so, you know, well, you gotta stay true to yourself, right? Right? So those were my fabrics for my most recent mood order. I have ordered with them before and I enjoy ordering with them. I can get into major trouble on their website as this little haul here does indicate. Um, I can get a little carried away. They have really nice fabrics. Everything I've ever gotten from them, even if it doesn't turn out exactly as I thought it would, perhaps the color is a little bit different because of my monitor or something like that. I always love the fabric anyway, even if it's not gonna be perfect for the project I originally thought it might be because the fabric always turns out to be nicer in the hand or the feel than I thought it would be. So I've never been poorly surprised by them. So I'm hopefully, hopefully not jinxing that, but I really like their fabrics and I would love to shop there in person sometime. So next time I'm in LA, probably have to make a stop. This probably will end up being my next project just because I need something nice and simple after all the embroidered stuff I made for my France trip. And speaking of that, I'm probably going to be putting this up after I've started putting up my um, French sort of journal uh, videos. I did a really poor job about vlogging myself and sort of narrating my uh, day, but I did film a lot of um, the scenery around me and the kind of stuff we got up to while we were in France. So hopefully I'll be able to um, edit that into something for you guys to see because I do want to share as much of my trip with you as I can. So hopefully those have been up on the channel or are coming soon and you will enjoy that. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for staying to the rambly end and again indulging me in my shopping habits. Um, hopefully you guys will like the dresses I come up with and you'll see them on the blog soon. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll see you guys again real soon.